Good morning and welcome. It's a Tuesday morning, the last Tuesday in the month of September. Well, the ember months are a quarter gone. <laughs> we're getting set to getting there to the end of the year, but we are here to ensure that that ride is a smooth and, of course, uh, an enjoying one. Welcome to Wake Up Nigeria. We're here to exactly give you all we need, all you need to start your day the right way. Uh, we're going to give you that little burst of energy, trying to bring the fun, bring the laughs and feel good movements as soon as we can. Yeah, I'm wondering how much energy did you got from that hard tank? <clears throat> yeah, I'm trying not to Goodness. choke on it. <laughs> take it time, take it time. I should? Okay. Take time. <clears throat> okay, oh, I'm good. back now. Good. So uh, thank you for helping me power through that, Mike. We're going to be pying through Tuesdays with smiles. And uh, yeah, those smiles are stretch for miles. Yeah, 42 is the lucky number that it touched to make me angry this morning. I'm sorry. I will not talk about I'm that. Sorry. Can I talk about it? But uh -huh. you, know, you know, I'm a billionaire. I can try and sort the person, uh, sort the person out for you. You know, that drink, person. Drink, that drink, drink. I should drink. Okay, I'll drink. All right. Drink. It's going to be a wonderful show. <laughs> Daddy, of course. In blue and pink. Baby blue and baby pink. <laughs> oh, what, Daddy, what's the... What's the what's the color you're wearing? I'm sure it's not just blue and pink. There should be something along the scale there. Maybe <laughs> uh, fuchsia pink or wow, something. I don't baby know. Baby pink, no. Jenny, what's it? What's Why it? Why are you trying to make something simple complicated? <laughs> yeah? It's what it is. It's oh, not look at right. it. Okay, so it's baby blue and pink. It's baby blue and baby pink. Exactly. Oh, baby Danny. How are you doing this <laughs> morning? Good morning. I'm great. How are you guys doing? I see the energy is up. Mm. Mm -hmm. Always, always. I'm vexed. I start that night because I'm vexed. Yeah, no vexed. <laughs> you, right. But hey, come on. Uh, my name is Mike Mesikeno. And I'm Titi Laya Oyinso. <laughs> and over the next one hour, 45 minutes, we have amazing TV coming your way. You can join the conversation across all social media platforms using our hashtag WakeUpNigeria on TVC. Yep, uh, you can hit us up on social media. It's at TVC Entertainment yeah. across all platforms. And then you can use our app to watch us live. TVC Entertainment or TV, Facebook, uh, I mean... Uh, not YouTube, that's where you can watch yeah. it. We used to um, stream live on Facebook, but yeah. not at the moment. But yeah. YouTube will be a go to place yeah. where you can catch us at TV's Entertainment Channel on YouTube. And of course, uh, all the places Go TV, that will be DTT Channel 16, and mm -hmm. Star Times will be 1 to 1. And then if it's terrestrial, it's ultra high frequency, the 49. band is 49. Indeed. And without fur without further ado. Mm, yeah? Without further ado. We have to move on to our lineup for this morning. Let's give you a quick look at our exciting highlights. All right, uh, Dr. Olatibi Olawale will be here for health this morning. He is an alumnus of the College of Medicine of the University of Lagos, physiotherapist with specialty in sport and orthopedics rehabilitation. He's also a member of the Nigerian Society of Physiotherapists and also a member of the American College of Sports Medicine. His interest especially is in injury prevention and sport and our topic for today would mm -hmm. be uh, discussing uh, something about stroke. Uh, stroke. Yes. Ooh. Stroke. Physiotherapy apparently can help with uh, recovery oh, definitely. from stroke. Definitely. And then, of course, we've got uh, Chris Bright, uh, music, uh, gospel music minister, to perform for us this morning. And on parenting, Mr. Femi Shofolue is back. A passionate youth educator with two decades of experience in teens and youth counseling. Today's topic is a really interesting one. We are balancing tradition and modernity, navigating the tension between traditional parenting practices and the demands of this challenging world. And then, uh, of course, uh, we are going to have our final guest who is a veteran. And uh, it's going to be quite an interesting uh, discussion with uh, him. Different movies and all of that. Uh, a mile from home, where my talent lies, honeymoon in hell, and all of that. Uh, we have Alex Ayalugo. Yeah. <laughs> Tuesday. I love this. Oh, I'm yeah. oh baby oh, pink oh, shoes. I like the bouncing of you guys' colors, actually. That's, my oh, that's true. And that's Titi's. Oh, that's those true. Those we got the memo in that. Because yeah. I woke up this morning, I like. Yeah. And the cord that binds you all together. Oh, uh, uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's by the way, By the way, Winfrey is going to be having a very busy October. Ooh, very, very busy. busy October. end of the year. Uh, oh, very, very. So if October is this busy, I'm wondering how December will be for Okay, so I've Because she's on like 
okay. the number of panels judging mm -hmm. and all of that, quite yeah. a lot. The Lord has been good. So Amen. I'm just trying to Praise say, now, at least, uh, what's the address to send the... Uh, what? <laughs> the parfait. The parfait! <laughs> <laughs> then you want, to, you want to be favorable. You want to have a favorable disposition. Wow. For those of you who are going to be judged, by yeah, I'll yeah. just give you the scope. Now, there's one particular that I'll send you the address. One parfait. Wow. That's, if you get that parfait, ah, that's, she's she's it's for you. <laughs> it's actually interesting you actually mentioned that because today we're actually um, selecting the Mr. World Nigeria Ooh, contestants for nice. Mr. World um, and all of that. It's actually have happened. Why picking Mr.? Why not Mr.? Because, I mean, not? we need to. Why, why, why woman would they pick Why, why, uh, uh, why not? Speak man. Yes, no. My man's going to speak man. <laughs> but, and she's, she's also going to be judging uh, cultural yes, diversity cultural, yeah. costumes on Friday here yeah. at TVC, Cultural Diversity Day. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's going to be an exciting one. <laughs> and, yes. uh, yeah, I just threw that in that there too. because I'm the one choreographing yes, it. I have a vested <laughs> interest. The news on Wake Up Nigeria, I am Mike Messicano. The Federal Executive Council has approved the setting up of a disaster relief fund that is meant to engender quick response to victims of disasters across the country. Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy, Wale Edun, spoke on Monday while briefing State House correspondents shortly after the FEC meeting char chaired by President Bola Tinubu at the presidential villa in Abuja. The fund is to source finances from the three tiers of government and private sector for flood victims. This is coming as FEC constituted a technical committee to reassess the dams across the country and particularly the Alao Dam in Borono State, where scores of lives were lost recently as a result of the flood disaster that ravaged many parts of the state's capital, Meidugudi. The committee is to be chaired by the Minister of Water Resources and has other members. The Federal Executive Council have constituted a committee to look into not only the Alao Dam, but other dams in the country to reassess them and come up with recommendations that will solve the challenge of flooding and also put it into use the available dams we have. Mr. President's views that we need in this era of climate change, of climate uh, uh, events, as well as the fact that, that from time to time there will be, no matter the prevention measures, there will be um, disasters that will occur, that we need to build greater resilience in the form of a substantial disaster relief fund, separate from the agencies that actually intervene physically. This will focus on the financing. The 81 Division says it will ensure crime is reduced in their area of responsibility. This is as they arrest the suspected criminals for crimes ranging from kidnapping, theft, to vandalism. A statement by Acting Deputy Director, Army Public Relations, 81 Division, Lieutenant Colonel Olabisi Olale Konayeni, revealed that the operations were successful based on credible intelligence. Areas the troops carried out the raids were Elegushi Beach, where one Uche Kende Akwari was nabbed stealing building materials. Another is 27-year-old Usman Abubakar, a suspected kidnapper from Kirby State on his way from Benin Edo State to the Ekpe area, Lagos. Locals who ran out on a group of nine suspected uh, suspects arrested for vandalizing and stealing equipment belonging to NNPC Atlas Cove Company at Mami Market in Boni Cantonment. The General Officer Commanding 81 Division, Major General Farouk Mijiniawa, while calling for more information from the public, said his men were professional in their conduct during operations which involved both foot and vehicle patrols. That's it on sports and the news for now. We'll take the time out. Stay with us. Or we will be back in a bit. Okay, then. Yeah. So, yeah. uh, you know how much time we have just to watch? Welcome things. back, Mike. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I saw something and it. Uh, so I maybe wanted to put it, I just want to say sibling relationship or mm. not sibling rivalry in this case. Uh, but if you remember Sister Sister, that sitcom that ran for a number of years, yeah. I can't get the exact number. Tia and Tamara, uh, Tamara Maori, yeah. who were the sisters, real twin sisters who played twin sisters in that sitcom. And there's something she said remarkably, she just went through a divorce. Mm. That's uh, Tia Maori went through a divorce and she said she's, she feels so alone. 
because mm. she's not close to her sister. A twin sister, who mm. they were thick as thieves. Yeah. And she says that she wish she could. I, I was reading through. No, maybe, when you say you're not as close, that could happen. You know, maybe I tell you not close. Grow, so something right. she said. She said that I can't just even pick up the phone and call her. Why? That's when I knew that Omo, it, it's like it's really bad. And then she says that, oh, she just heard, she heard about her sister's show, like everybody else, online. Mm. Goodness me. That means the relationship has really deteriorated. Mm. I'm mm. like, it just got me, you know, thinking, uh, mm. what could, you know, with the... Titi had our own sibling thing yesterday, but that yeah. was between us <laughs> and No, 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 the crew. I didn't actually mention it. No, 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 no. We don't have time. Not in detail. We don't have time. Not in detail. We don't have time. I'm just saying people growing yeah. apart is possible. Share the tea now. Why are you... No, no, there's no time. There's no, no time. That's I was why. just, I was just expressing the fact that I wish I was a little bit closer with my brother. You know, my, my brother and I don't really talk that much, and I, I wish that we could talk more. It's, it's actually a hope that I can sort of rebuild that relationship, but it's, it's a two-way street. That's, that's how I see it. Um, you, one side could be making all the effort and the other side isn't reciprocating. And then maybe over time, you know, it spins the other way. One person that had been trying before now stops trying and the other person now starts trying and they're like, you know. So yeah. there has to be a middle point. I don't know. You have a lot of siblings, though. Know, Are you close to all, all of them? Siblings, like if I, I mean, like, <laughs> battalion. No, so a lot more than me anyway. I only oh, have one. Yeah, I mean, I, so that's the thing, right? As I say... Right when you when you meet friends, right friends are people you actually select to be in your life. Siblings are people that you usually fall like, like you don't have a you don't have a choice. You don't have a choice. Do you understand? So the truth is, it actually I mean I feel there are different situations. This particular situation is actually talking about a, a possible rift. Mm. So it's not as if they were just never close. Yeah, I yeah. mean it's a situation where probably something happened. First, she cannot necessarily pick up a call and call her sister. Mm. That means maybe they actually had a falling out and all of that. And as you said, it takes two. However, sometimes someone literally needs to water the ground, mm. right? Sometimes it might take a while mm. for, before the person actually comes to the point of maybe seeing how sincere you are actually wanting to do that. Yeah. But sometimes the people actually may just block their mind. But I feel if she's feeling this way, she should probably try to reach out. Mm. And then if, just probably try and... Mm. I don't know. But I don't they know. were so close on screen. Yeah. They were close in real life. Not only screen. Because yeah. they were because of their relationship in real life, it was easier to carry their chemistry on screen. Yeah. They were thick as thieves, man. And you know, you see people are talking about, you know, the peace square situation right here. Yeah. And this one's yeah. yeah. yes. yeah. yes. I just know that I, I I go back, I remember a documentary about the Braxton family. Yeah. I don't know which of them says I love my family, <laughs> but I don't always like them. Mm. Yes, of course. Well, I don't know if, she, if love is what you should use, but mm. then she was talking about family dynamics can be yeah. complicated. I mean, you can have siblings sometimes, and like, who have like different yeah. world views and yeah. all of that. You just have to agree to disagree. Just, it also uh, takes yeah. a either a matriarch or a patriarch of that family to take control. But we would love to hear your thoughts uh, on this. Use our hashtag Wake Up Nigeria on TVC and let us know. All right, we're back after this time out. Thank you for staying with us. Now, as a show, Wake Up My Joy, we are one that prides yourself in the fact that we are very committed to the arts, all form of arts, the literally arts uh, also, when, whenever we do our book chats. And today we have quite an interesting discussion. Now, the Nigeria Prize for Literature is one of the richest and most prestigious literary prize, prizes in the world. And of course, it is aimed at bringing authors and critics to public attention and celebrating the craftsmanship in literary appreciation in the country. Now, other categories of award are Nigeria Prize for Science and all of that, but this prize is worth $100,000. Now, we have two of the finalists of that prize right here in the house. I've got Ndidi Chiazo. In in Nemo. Nemo. Yeah. It is great to have you. You're Thank welcome. You. Thank you. And in Canada, we've got Dr. Uche. He will be joining us via Zoom if he's there. Dr. Uche, good morning. How are you doing? Thank you for having me here. All right. Okay, one of you. Okay, there's a third person who's not here, but one of you should be winning. I'll get to you, Dr. Uche, but let's start with Indidi right here. A father's prize. Yeah, that is the work that was pride. submitted for it. Yes. It just very, 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 just tell us the synopsis. What is the Father's Child about? Okay, Father's Pride is a book that ex explores three themes. Um, the theme of environmental protection, the theme of culture, promoting and preserving our culture, and also the issue of domestic violence, especially mm. violence against children, in respect to the Child's Rights Act of 2003. Yeah. Mm. So... There's also the minor theme of bullying, which is a major issue. 
and then there is also a minor team of preservation of our languages. You will agree that our local languages are dying out. So this book exploits all this. Wonderful, wonderful. When you were writing this book, did you know you were going to submit it for that prize? Initially, when I started the book, I had another title. So it was intended to be a picture book, you know. I wanted to just portray a little girl who is always sad and sad and to examine why she's always sad. But as the prize was drawing closer, I decided, why don't I make this a chapter book and, you know, you know, increase the volume and then explore more other themes. themes. Other themes. So All right. I had to, you know, do some little changes in order to submit it for this. All right, prize Dr. Here. Uche, the book is Wishmaker. Talk to us about Wishmaker. What's Wishmaker about? What was the process like putting Wishmaker together? Oh, uh, thank you very much. I think. Uh, what I try to explore in Wishmaker uh, included kindness, uh, friendship, courage, overcoming one's fears, whatever those fears may be, and then believing in your own ability to, to pursue a goal you, you set out for yourself. So it focuses on a nine-year-old boy who live with his mother. Uh, she's, she's a single parents and the father died uh, in the river. So and this boy has this uh, fear uh, for the river. And so he met a stranger who he struck uh, an unlikely friendship with this stranger. And the stranger somehow got him to really believe in himself and overcome his fear. And in the end, he was able to do all that and uh, bring some sort of comfort to his uh, or mother. All right. So, yeah, so okay. what are, wait, while you're writing this book, like the same thing I asked uh, Didi, was there a plan for you to win this particular prize? What, what, was, what, what, was, the, what was the purpose? Well, of course, I wrote this book in 2021. When I wrote it, I wasn't, I didn't have the LNG in mind because that was in 2021. So I wrote that book the same time I wrote my collection of short stories, Double Wahala. So usually when I write, I don't have any uh, any uh, prize in mind. I just write because I feel like writing. My forthcoming poetry collection, I also wrote it. I don't have the LNG in, in mind. But of course, winning the LNG, if that happens, would be a great achievement and uh, a gift. All right, uh, I'll get back to you, but just joining us, I just found it was supposed to be two, but now we have all three finalists here. Olubumi is in the house, Olubumi Familoni. Hello, Olubumi. Good morning. Welcome to the show. The book is The Road Does Not End. Talk to us about the synopsis of The Road Does Not End. Why did you write it? What is it all about? Were you having an expectation to win this prize? Talk to us, Olubumi. All right, um, good morning. Thank you very much for having me. Um, the Road Does Not End um, is basically about a boy who has to um, navigate a lot of things in an adult environment. And you know, many of those things that he also has to navigate are also adult emotions as well. He has to deal with um, grief, he has to deal with abandonment. Then there's also um, the major issue of out-of-school children as well. He also, he also has to deal with the fact that he has suddenly lost his right to quality education or even any kind of education at all. Then you know, he has to um, hawk in the streets, he has to beg. He basically just has to you know, um, get through every, all these things that you know, a child is not supposed to uh, experience. A child has you know, the right to be protected, a right to quality education, a right to life, a proper life as well. But all of those rights have been taken away um, from him. So we're just basically I think, inspired by the escalation of the problem of out of school children in Nigeria, which you know, when we look at it with the numbers that were sending about 18.3 million um, out of school children as at um, the beginning of this year, the entire country, we should be taken as an emergency, um, really. So I think that's you know, basically what inspired um, the book. That's also what the book is mostly about. All right, uh, Olubumi, that's a nice one. There's something I will get across, just finally, I'll get a thought from all of you, and that would be, I see that all these books, they are themed around things that affect the society, things that could create and cause an impact in some kind of way and all of that, yeah. if you do win the prize. 
What are your plans? What do you plan to do as a writer moving forward? Okay, I've been asked, asked this question several times, and I still maintain my answer. We, are, we have a lot of Nigerians from low-income families who don't even get books to read. If I win the prize, I would like this book to get to as many Nigerian children as possible. I've always been involved in book donation exercises to, you know, public even school, yes, now, yes, even before now. So I intend to do that, continue doing that, to continue doing that. And then we've had five previous books that won this prize in previous years. We have uh, um, Boom Boom. Okay. We have uh, The Missing Clock. We have Reader's Theater. We have My Cousin Sammy. So together with a father's prize, if if I win the prize, I want these books because they are fantastic books. Wonderful. The essence of writing a book is for it to be read. Right. So it doesn't just end with winning the prize. A lot of children should get, get to this. read this because they are fantastic titles. All right. You know, these are books that deserve to be read by as many children, even Thank adults, right. as possible. Thank you so much indeed. Yeah. Dr. Uche and of course Olubimi, you are out there. Talk to us, both of you. Dr. Uche first. Uh, what happens if you do win this prize? What's, what's, the, what's the way forward after if you do win the prize? Uh, well, three things I would like to do if I won the prize would be one, a book donation. I, in previous years, uh, I had donated more than 300 books to uh, 35 schools in Imo State and Enugu State. And uh, I would like to set up a literary prize however uh, small that would be. And of course, also creating opportunities for my fellow finalists to be in a book uh, dialogue or book drive with me. So by that, I mean uh, exploring opportunities to get Olubumi and Ndidi involved in some kind of uh, book literacy program in Nigeria. Thank I like you. That. I like that. I like that, Dr. Ochi. Uh, Lubumi, let's wrap up with you very, very fast. What would be your own plan if you do win after this? Okay, uh, thank you very much. Um, I think I'd, I'd mentioned it before. There's some work um, that I do um, out here in Ibadan with um, children, community theater, um, because you know, I'm also a drama, dramatist as well. So this, since this is a prize for children's literature, just try to incorporate that, the theater and children, and um, just get more funding, of course, for that children's theater to groom more child actors, then also um, bring more um, child writers as well, you know, people that are young writers that are just on, on the come up um, as well, so yeah. Thank you so much, Ndidi, Thank Uche, you. and Olubumi. Three of you are beacons, shining lights. Here is all of us at Wake Up Nigeria wishing you all the best. Thank Keep you. up doing what you're doing. Whatever Thank happens, you. you are champions. Thank well you done. So much. Thank, Thank you very you. much. All right, let's head over to the kitchen now. Danny in baby colors. What's up? What's happening? Do we have, is it baby breakfast we're having this morning? Ah, we're having something quite interesting with very few ingredients. I'm actually very curious. Good morning and welcome into the Wake Up Nigeria kitchen. I'm here with Chef Tade. That wants to give me high BP this morning. Chef Tade, Good morning. what's going on? Right, Why are you trying right. to stress me? <laughs> Why? What did I do to you? All right, tell me. So I literally see uh, quite a few ingredients here, but you say we're literally making... What are we making? Alfredo pasta. Alfredo pasta. So tell me, what do we need to make Alfredo pasta? All right, we need the cream. Obviously. Uh, yes, <laughs> that in there we have uh, real butter. We butter? Have parmesan cheese. Okay. And cooking cream. And cooking cream. Okay, yeah. so now a nice combination of like yeah. some really fatty foods. Okay, and then we have... We uh, have pasta. Pen pasta yes. right there. And uh, what are you doing? Um, I have my chicken, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. so I have black pepper, mm -hmm. parsley flakes, and olive oil. Olive oil. All right. So talk to me about the chicken. So this is that is is that chicken breast? Not chicken breast. Okay. Yeah, I couldn't get chicken breast, so okay. I decided to make use of the lamb. The thai. Yeah. Okay. And then you're chopping it up. Yeah. All right. So for so it's going to literally be. Uh, Bean it. Then mm -hmm. uh, I use this as a side. Okay, so now we'll grill the chopped ones and then we use yes. the other chicken thighs yeah. as the sides. Amazing. So I'm quite, um, um, okay, let's just run through the menu quickly okay. of uh, what exactly we need for this particular Alfredo pasta in case you want to try this at home. And of course, we need pasta. Yeah, so here we're using pen pasta, olive oil, garlic, heavy cream, cheese, black pepper powder, parsley, 
chicken cubes and of course uh, it says prawns there but yeah, I, I, guess get that. <laughs> I guess we're using chicken i guess we're using chicken here now as well. All right, so we need to definitely um, go. But then again, when we get back, we'll be telling you exactly how we're preparing this particular menu. So do not go anywhere. We'll be right back after the break. Welcome back. Now, in this world, as we advance into another new year, uh, the world of parenting is evolving quickly, a lot more quickly than some parents can catch up with. Uh, on Parenting Today, we have Mr. Femi Shofolue. He's back. He's a passionate youth educator. He has two decades of experience with teens uh, and youth counseling, and he's driven by this desire to see the youth excel. Um, he also runs Licky's Library. He offers free services to teens and youth, and today we're talking about balancing tradition and modernity, how to navigate the tension between traditional parenting practices and the demands of this rapidly changing world or should we just say this technologically changing world welcome back welcome back good morning thanks for having me today so it does feel like uh, our children's eyes are growing square because they're always looking at screens. the screen <laughs> uh, and it's probably even helping well encouraging evolution of our backs and our, our posture because we're always like this on tablets um i have to say when it comes to parenting, are there more pros than cons? For every advantage uh, children can derive from technology, yeah. there are always more disadvantage okay. for children. Okay. You need to grow to a certain level for you to know the balance on how to use technology. Okay. If allowed, children will not mind staying with technology all day mm. because everybody naturally until you get to that stage of res being responsible, okay. you want to do what gives you the most, uh, how do I put it now? The most enjoyment, the most pleasure. satisfaction, the most pleasure. That's the word. And children will not mind to stay with screen all day long if they are allowed. But as an adult, you know the negative implication of that. Okay, so what exactly are those negative implications that you are especially worried about? Uh, is, it, ah. is it exposure? Or is it, uh, does it have to do with the tech itself and um, radiation? Or does it have to do with health, mental health? Which areas are you focused on? My number one concern is the reduced attention span oh, that okay. it creates in children. All right. uh, almost all the content children have today, if you go and check, none of them hold the screen for more than three seconds. Mm. And that, in a way, rewire their brain, reduce their attention span, sure. There are more complaints in schools today about children not concentrating during lecture time sure. than we used to have. And this is traceable to digital screen. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, that is one. Two, social isolation. A lot of them, they, they behave awkwardly when it comes to, you know, social skill because they spend more time on the screen than in real life. Okay. And as parents, you need to learn how to tell your children to go out, make friends, bring their friends home. Any friend they can bring home, mostly, they are there. In fact, your children will be telling you, my friend, my friend, my friend. Go and check who those friends are. They've never met some of them. True. Very true. It's actually um, sort of discouraging when you think about it. But then I'm thinking about children in other countries, places like Asia. The classrooms themselves, some of them, they have desks with computers in them, you know. Uh, some of them are using computers to even scan to say that they've arrived at school. They've, they've gone so advanced in technology. So if we as parents don't encourage our kids to understand technology, aren't we pulling our kids back? Those countries you mentioned, uh, those gadgets they use in school, they are not like the phone that we carry today, okay. especially in Africa. Our phone has a lot of UV light, mm. blue light that disrupts sleep. Over there, all those screens, they don't glare light back to the face of the children. And these are classroom technology. Okay. They are not the one that we carry about. In fact, in those countries you mentioned, I, I, mm. I believe you know that those children that have access to technology in school, they don't have access to technology at home until they are 18. Okay. They don't have phone until they are 18. The great LeBron James, the basketballer, when his son turned 18 and he gave him his first phone, 
he announced it on social media. I was one of the first set of people to follow that boy about three years ago. Wow. Look at what that boy is doing today. And this is a boy that was raised in a home where they have money for everything they could afford. And the father insists that the boy will not have phone until he's 18. Just imagine that. We here in Nigeria, what do we even have to, be, to start with? And we want to use that as a social status. My son is using this, my daughter is using that, not knowing exactly what this is doing to those children. And we, do, we practice something in Africa that I call a digital pacifier. You don't want your children to cry, you throw screen at them. You don't want to be disturbed for a while, you throw screen at them. You need two hours to concentrate on your study, you throw screen at them. You are basically using their life to build yours. And that is not good. So now this, this is already established. Um, it has become a culture. It has become the thing that parents are using to distract their children for periods of time, long periods of time, a bit longer than we should. Um, now that's acknowledged. But what do parents now have to begin to do? Because it becomes a, a, a weaning off period. Uh, there might be some withdrawal symptoms from these devices. So where do parents begin? Uh, for parents, uh, I, I think if your child is already addicted because there's digital addiction, no doubt, mm. and it starts from just allowing them to have their own time with the screen without being guided. If your child is addicted already, you have a lot of work to do. But if they are not addicted, set rules at home. Okay. Let there be digital free zones at home. For example, in their room, no tech is allowed. Okay. Make that a rule. Nobody can take gadgets to toilet. Okay. It is not allowed. And as a parent, set the example. Sure. If you're a parent that work on gadget more, mm. set up a working space at home mm. and only use those gadgets when you're actually working, not when you're trying to cool off. Introduce books. Books is still, is still cool. Very true. I, 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 I run a library and I know the impact books can have on children. Mm. Let them have less, you know, at, uh, less interaction with screen. It's very, going to help them a lot. Very amazing idea. So I remember talking about the fact that uh, the average center table in the home has more remote controls on it than, than books. books. Right. There was a time center tables were all about books. Books and magazines you know? so and newspapers. Maybe let's try it out, you know. Try it out for a week. Replace your remote controls on the center table with some really interesting picture books, even picture books. There will be resentment yeah, if yeah. you do that. Yeah. But you, will, you don't have to mind, just yeah. do it. And then maybe introduce a bookshelf into your, into your parlor, you know, and f intentionally fill it up with some books. You never know, they might just be interested and wonder why is mom or dad putting books in front of us and at least pick one up and open one eventually. <laughs> and when you're putting books, please, there are books that are yeah. really interesting sure. that we encourage them to read. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so. Thank you so much. Uh, for joining us as always. Thank Mr. you so Kukuwe. much. Uh, we are definitely interested in hearing your thoughts on this. I can't wait to see them use our hashtag Wake Up Nigeria on TVC and tag us Wake Up Nigeria TVCE with your thoughts. At this point, something smells good. Woo! It's wafing from the kitchen. Winfrey, how can you stand that amazing <laughs> aroma? I'm not sure myself, but amazingly, Chef Sade is here. Uh, literally taking us on an interesting journey of uh, pasta, Alfredo. Hi, Chef. How far? Welcome to Italy. <laughs> Welcome to Italy, right? Awesome. And uh, okay, tell me what's going on. All right, I'm trying to fry my my mm -hmm. chicken. Yeah. So in one pan we have the chicken thighs, yeah. uh, drumsticks particularly. Such healthy, juicy-looking drumsticks. We have them boiling mm -hmm. and then on the other pan we actually have um, the chicken cubes sizzling away right then yeah. what do we have in the small pot i have a uh, water water i want okay. to steam it so i can pour add the, my, uh, the add pasta, pasta in into it. okay amazing amazing so tell me so after we do that what happens next then we mix everything all together okay this when it's well cooked, like yes. so a dante yes. mixed with... So we'll just mix that with the cream. Then we'll and add the chicken. We'll add the chicken, and so, that's about... Yeah. That is the easiest the Alfredo out, recipe I've out. ever, <laughs> ever heard about. So, of course, we're just using parsley, um, some black pepper, 
some salt and some seasoning cubes. You guys should definitely try this recipe. It's actually amazing for a Tuesday because it's actually straight to the point. Once you get all your um, your ingredients ready, right? I mean, and it's not every day you should be eating combination, combination, right? <laughs> uh, so in case you want to try this out, on the screen there we have the menu for you. We have Alfredo pasta, and for the ingredients we have pasta. We have olive oil, we have garlic, we have heavy cream, uh, cheese, black pepper powder, parsley, chicken cubes, and uh, prawns, if you would like, right? Okay, so tell me now. So I actually heard that uh, it's a myth, people that add oil to their pasta, so it doesn't, that, so it separates. Is that you, true? Yeah, it's good to add oil, oil. To, uh, into mm -hmm. it. Some people believe that it's a myth, that it doesn't, no. it doesn't matter. You, really, want need, you really need to add. You really so, need to add, right? Yeah, so it won't stick. So it won't stick together. together. All right, amazing. So you definitely heard that, right? We have two different opinions right here. All right, and uh, we still have our meal cooking right here. So make sure you do not touch that dial because you need to see the end of it, right? But right now, we actually have to go on a break because it is the top of the hour. So we'll be back with some more. Welcome back. It's the second hour of Wake Up Nigeria. We've had one full hour, quite a uh, fast paced hour with quite a number of things stuff inside all of it. That's what Wake Up Nigeria is all about. Welcome. 45 minutes more yes, to get sir. some fun. We have even more lined up for you. So even if you thought we had peaked or you were thinking of going somewhere, like just leaving the screen, mm. don't. The first hour was just a taster, a teaser. We have quite a lot coming your way. Uh, now, my name is Titi Laya Unisong. I'm Mike Mexicano, of course. Uh, Danny yeah. is in the kitchen, and uh, we're going to make today more <laughs> yeah. fruitful yeah. and productive. Yeah. She knows what we're talking about, yeah, of we'll course. But I yeah. Something. You <laughs> me it everywhere. I mean? No, it's us, it's us, it's us. We're going to make it more fruitful and productive. Anyways, but hey, come I'm still here with uh, Chef, uh, Chef Tade, and he's making uh, pasta Alfredo, creamy, creamy, creamy. So yeah, we'll be back here in a bit. <laughs> All right, we'll kick off uh, the second lap with uh, Chris Bright, yes, sir. a gospel music minister, singer, songwriter, musician, who is known for his passionate devotion to reconciling humanity. He'll yes, be sir. here for a performance this Monday morning, uh, this Tuesday. Can't wait for that yeah, performance. Definitely. Can't wait. Then, of course, we will be having our health conversation. Dr. Olatubi Olawale, alumnus of College of Medicine, Unilag, is a physiotherapist, specialty in sports, orthopedics, rehabilitation. He's also a member of the Nigeria Society of Physiotherapists and a member of the American College of Sports Medicine. Special interest in injury prevention. Oh, wow. If only. Now, apparently, there is a, a really good physiotherapy methods that can be used to help stroke people who've had strokes. And that's what we're going to be talking about uh, today. And then, of course, we will have our final guest in the house, Alex Ayalugu, will be here. He's been there in quite a number of productions. I won't be talking to him about his career. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, that's yeah. Uh, the rundown for the second part of the Indeed. show. It's going to be a wonderful one. Um, uh, we have quite a lot that we'll get to do. Also, our Alfredo and all of that is getting said. Mufi was so, very, very impressed with uh, Chef Tadi's uh, style when it comes to putting our friends together. He's fine dining. So whatever is, I say, man, he oh, he's fine dining. The, the more the minimal the ingredients, the tastier the dish. You know, sometimes put too much spice inside, just spoils everything. But he has a special way of putting things together. It's simple. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Love it. All right, let's just see what he's doing now. Mm. I think that's the chicken breast. Ooh. Um, oh, is that the pasta? Uh, frying there. Is that the mm. breast or the pasta? Mm. Mike, Chef I'm Tade. sure you know the parts. My just smelling is. <laughs> 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 Welcome back to the Wake Up Night Drag Kitchen. I'm still here with Chef Tade and we're making pasta Alfredo or Alfredo pasta. Which one? Which comes first? Alfredo pasta? Pasta Alfredo? Alfredo pasta. Alfredo mm. pasta. Amazing. Yeah. All right, so we have uh, three pots on there. We have our chicken breast. Um, sizzling in uh, the uh, in the pan, and of course the chicken thighs um, steaming there, and of course our pasta. All right, so you're checking if it's ready. Yeah. Okay, is it ready? Almost. Almost ready. Just few. Amazing. Just takes like a few minutes to actually. So Titi actually made a statement. She said the fewer the ingredients. The, something about it being better. Is that true? Mm, not, really, not really. Not really, okay. <laughs> okay, because I mean, I know I've seen different chefs. So there are natural ingredients that, uh, mm -hmm. that do not need uh, 
too much conflict. Yes, 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 so yes. The, uh, the simpler it is, mm -hmm. the better. The better it is for everyone, right? All right, amazing. So tell me, I mean, because I've seen different chefs make Alfredo, and sometimes it's it's quite, I mean, it's a lot. You just think of it and you're like, ah. All right, so what is the, what ingredients do you think that they use that you are skipping out today, that you don't think is absolutely necessary? Nothing. I think they do the... Nothing. Nothing, right? Yeah. Nothing. I guess the... So what? why is it looking simplified to me? Like, <laughs> is there something? And that's because just, I like... already mixed this from home. Okay. So... Okay. That's why. That's why. So yeah, we have so three ingredients yes, in one, exactly. right? Exactly. So you just like one lump of ingredients yeah, instead exactly. of all of that. And can we do use any without the other? Because you have butter here, we have cheese here, and yeah, we have cream. I have a simpler way of making this. Yes. Adventure, we find it difficult to get some of the... Ingredients, yes. Especially when... Uh, it's too expensive. Yes, so cheese. We, mm -hmm. There's a way we supplement. Supplement. So yeah, give us now. Uh, you might really. Hey, now, wow. <laughs> See, why would I need that? We need supplements, but anyways, <laughs> no problem. I will squeeze it out of him behind the scenes. <laughs> now on to our health segment for this Tuesday. Friend of the house, Dr. Olatubi Olawale is back. He's an alumnus of the College of Medicine at the University of Lagos, a physiotherapist with a specialty in sports and orthopedics, as well as rehabilitation. Now, he's a member of the Nigeria Society of Physiother 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 Physiotherapists. I got it. Yep. And, of course, he's a member of the American College of Sports Medicine with special interest in injury prevention in sport. It's great to have you back in the building. Thank you very much. <laughs> you saw what happened there. Yeah, right. How many times a day does that happen? When you want to tell people what you do. No, 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 no. It's, that, that has never happened to me before. Really? Physiotherapist. I'm a physiotherapist. Yeah, um, okay. So when they try to pronounce it, it doesn't... doesn't. Get... Some people say physiotherapy. Or they just have a funny way to, to, <laughs> to pronounce it, but it's actually when you want to spell, some people spell it wrongly. Mm. Most people actually spell it wrongly, but... So I, I want to touch on the people that approach you the most. Um, families, friends, loved ones of people who have possibly gone through a stroke or a partial stroke, um, wondering how to get their parents or loved ones back on their feet after going through something that serious. It's a very serious thing we're talking about here today. Dr. Latsubi, where, where do they begin? The one thing about stroke is this stroke actually, when stroke happens to someone, the intention is to actually probably take the person's life. Mm. So when you survive that incident, you're now called a stroke survival. And stroke happens when there is a damage to the brain. Wow. And at least one of you will have had someone that have had stroke before, probably your friend, your mother, your grandma, or your friend's mom, someone related to you have had stroke before. And stroke usually happens when there is a damage to the brain. Hmm. And when there's a damage to the brain, it affects the, the, the limbs, the, the one side of the limbs, either the right side of the limbs or the left side of the limbs. Now, okay. the brain is divided into two hemispheres the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. Now, when the left hemisphere is affected, then your right side of your body is affected. Okay. Now, when the right hemisphere is affected, then your um, left part of your body is affected. It can be either weakness or total paralysis of the affected side of the body. Wow. So that's everything from facial expressions, um, everything from neck movement, just to shoulder movement from your face, your face, the front of the first thing they even notice is actually your face dropping. Wow, when there's when there's when there's the face just deviation of the face to one side, wow. then another thing, then there's imbalance when you see the patient stand up yeah. and the patient cannot even stand on the feet, or you actually tell the patient to the patient to even raise the arm and the both arms and one arm drops. Mm. That's one of the things you've checked. Sometimes it even affect the speech, wow. their speech is their speech is actually slow, slow speech, or probably there is a um, they cannot even talk at all. So, mm. so sometimes, so this is actually very serious. And we have two kinds of stroke, actually. Okay. We have the ischemic stroke and the hemorrhagic stroke. The ischemic stroke is actually kind of common because um, ischemic stroke happens when there is um, a blood clot okay. in the brain or when there is um, no enough blood, so when there's a blockage of the arteries going to the brain and when there's no enough blood supply to the brain, that is ischemic stroke. And the hemorrhagic stroke um, happens when there's an outburst of um, um, blood in the in the in the mm -hmm. brain. Example: Now you have a pipe, and the, there's a burst in the pipe, and wow. boom, and there's blood around. So wow. there are two kinds of strokes: so the ischemic and the hemorrhagic. So each type of stroke actually have different management. Mm -hmm. But what I'm actually advocating for is that quick management of stroke will reduce your 
uh, fast management of or quick management of stroke will reduce the effects at the long run. Okay. To lose the, the, the rate at which you have your disabilities at the long run, because sometimes if it is not tot quickly attended to, you might even come down with total paralysis. Mm. So that's one of the major things we need to prevent. So now uh, a lot of stroke survivors uh, end up either being in a wheelchair or even at some point being bedridden for a while. When, when uh, family members realize that this is happening, what should they do? Now, when someone survived stroke, the first thing, that is where physiotherapy comes in. In the first, next 24 hours after the person has survived stroke, okay. physiotherapists come into play. What are they doing? The physiotherapy is actually trying to rehabilitate the patient back to the previous state before he had stroke. Okay. Trying to make sure that the muscles respond quickly, mm. try to make sure that the patient gets balanced, even try to even work on the cognition of the patient. So most patients comes back, comes down with stroke and they don't do anything. They leave the patient down there and they come down with contractual stiffness. Okay. You see a lot of stroke patients going around, walking like this, hand stiff, leg stiff, they can't move around. So the work of the physiotherapist now is to make sure that these things don't happen and make sure that the patient recovers faster. So 24 hours. In that first 24-hour window, as long as the person is lucid and, and is, is aware... So now, in that first 24 hours, yeah. a lot of things is done. Okay. The physician tries to bring down the blood. So now, there are many things that can cause stroke. Like, let yeah, me just quickly dive into that. Okay. We have high blood pressure, we have high cholesterol, high, high sugar, a lot of things. Even if you smoke, you are prone wow. to having stroke. Wow. So now, when the, the, the person is down with stroke and been diagnosed that, oh, this is stroke, they do a CT scan to know the kind of stroke, then the next thing they do, they try to regulate the blood pressure or whatever is causing that stroke to happen. Once the patient is stable, yeah. the next thing is physiotherapy, please. It is a, one thing, physiotherapy is one of the leading um, role in management of stroke because okay. it is very, very important from beginning to the end. end. Okay. So it's not about medication now. It's not about oral medication. It's not about um, um, eating and, and anything else. Right at that point, it's about getting those limbs moving again. The medications is actually probably make you make your blood pressure regulate. Okay. You make everything regulate. But the major thing is physical activity and exercise. You know, there's, I've said it here before. There is no actually a muscle, a drug yeah. that can make your muscles work. Mm. The only thing that can make your muscles work is actually when you exert that muscle into stress exercise. Okay. That is the only thing. So right. when you have stroke, we are trying to make sure that your muscles work, your joints work back, and we send a signal back to your brain that, okay, brain, this is what you're meant to do. Please do this. And yeah. over time, the patient gets better. So statistically speaking, what are the percentage chance that people regain 100% function? Now, one thing about stroke is that you might really not get 100% function okay. after stroke. It depends on the severity. Okay. Most people get 90% function back, 98% function back. Fantastic. But your recovery or your how you get better de depends on when you start rehabilitation or when you even start your treatment. Amazing, amazing. Dr. Alatobi, I think someone out there has learned today and has this information for a reason. Uh, help those friends, family members, your neighbors in your community who have been through this, help them understand that physiotherapy is important when recovering from a stroke. All right, then uh, please use our hashtag Wake Up Nigeria on TVC and let us know your thoughts. We're taking a quick break. There's still more on Wake Up Nigeria. You've definitely seen his face somewhere. In fact, if you don't know his name, you start thinking, which one? Which one? There's so many. Oh, my Talent Lies, Honeymoon in Hell, Broken Vengeance, House of Lotana. Dimeji, that's where a number of you might have seen him, of course. Our uh, final guest on the show this morning is Alex Ayalungu. It is great to have you, sir. You are welcome. You're a very special brain when it comes to Nollywood. Because, uh, yes, there are not so many. If you go, there are some roles that you, I mean, if you want to look for a 20, 35-year-old young boy, there are plenty and all of that. But at your, you know, at your level, there are not so many who are good at delivering their lines and doing all of this. Let's talk about, uh, you know, your start as, um, you know, as an actor and all of that. How did this all start for you? Oh, well, good morning, Nigeria. Mm. Um, I started acting in school. Mm. All those uh, school drama, all those uh, uh, Shakespeare, uh, things fall apart and so on and so forth. Those mm. school drama, that was where I, I started. Mm. And um, 
by the grace of God, I ended up in Nollywood. In Nollywood. How did that happen? You know, because a number of people, are, that means you are a trained thespian, as it were. Yeah, just so I many. studied English in the university mm. as a teaching subject. And there are so many <clears throat> aspects of it that has to do with drama. Drama, definitely. So I was kind of conversant with drama and delivery. And all it was. I wasn't like, and also when, when we were secondary school, mm. in spite of the drama society, I was also in the debating society where you uh, go to argue points and, and uh, all of that. You know, yes, that exactly. Of. So I was conversant with my delivery. Mm. And uh, when my brother, my younger brother, my Alog, mm. uh, told me about Nollywood, uh, and he is one of the people that st yes, started Yes, yes, definitely. So I, I, I said, yeah, I'm interested. How was the transition for you? It wasn't difficult. All I know, you know, in school drama, that stage, mm. you voice more than when you are in movie. When you are, exactly that. And you now, some, some actors have been, uh, how do I put it, accused of overacting because of that, that stage uh -huh. thing. You know, with stage, you have to, it's larger than life. You, you have, have to project. Project, exactly. You and so, project. And so you hear that thing that some actors will say, ah, this person is being too much of a thespian while being on set. What are your thoughts on that? Um, it's just the transition. Mm. You knowing when you are on stage and then when you are before the camera. Mm. You don't have to scream before the camera. But you have to be loud enough to be heard. To be heard, yes. right? When the need arises, because yeah. sometimes you need to... Sometimes you have to scream, like when, if you are angry. Okay. You are in, in hey, no, no, I, for Nollywood, well, it's not everybody that's, that's, that screams when they are angry. Uh, well, so people, when they are angry, that's when they are even silent. Okay, but okay. most of, of the things of the that time. you have to exactly. do, like if you are rebuking your daughter or your son or somebody, you mm. have to lift your voice or exactly. raise your voice mm. in order to do that. Uh, beside that, you can, like the people you say that they, when they're angry, they will just. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> it depends on. It depends, it's, definitely. It, with all that you have done, what has been your most challenging role in uh, Nollywood? Mm. Well, uh, the one of the first movies I did mm. was uh, A Mile from Home. A Mile from Home, yeah, I think I see, I remember that name also. And. Uh, I had to play a drug lord. Ah, he suits you now. You look like <laughs> with, with the stick, no, with the walking no, stick. No, no, no. Uh, now <laughs> that I started using this ones. In those days, I was just almost <laughs> so new in the industry. Mm, and, okay. Uh, and you, but I have seen some of these other uh, uh, Mexican, American drug lords, and I know how they perform. So. For me to now, and being a yeah. pastor. And, oh, you are a pastor? Uh, yes, and uh, I don't smoke, I don't drink. And you, did you? And did then you, you I, had to to, I had to, you know, <laughs> puff the tin. <laughs> in order to... What did your brethren say? Uh, uh, what did they say? No, but, you know, that's the stage. What did they say? Well, well, people can say whatever they like. When you when you had to <laughs> when you when you've had to act a role like a Chiwe Talago role, <laughs> you know that kind of role, a lot of that. How do you how do you how do you prepare yourself? Because you know that now I, I did not know you were a pastor, but now you know it, it can be different when you're trying to project that thing that is quite different from who you are yes. in real life. How do you get yourself psyched up or into character for those kind of roles? Now, first of all, you tell yourself you are that character. Hmm. You are Mr. Okonkwo, you are, you are whatever. You are going to, to be and portray that character to the letter, hmm. to the fullest. So you forget about what you really, you are. really are. Now you get into that character and then you deliver your... So uh, I've read, I've seen some documentaries where this most happens in, mostly happens in Hollywood where someone got so much into a character mm. that after shooting, it was hard to come out of that character. I, I, it, I have not so much in Hollywood, but in Hollywood, where maybe somebody went into a, a role where they had to be, you know, melancholy and, you know, they, 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 they had to be, you know, they had to change their attitude. And I found that after shooting, it was hard to get back to who they are. 
like some people in Nigeria too, in Hollywood, in Hollywood too, they kind of leave this, the character they played, mm. like Hank mm. and mm. I mean, he's himself and the character he play in all those uh, talk so, guys, but, uh, okay, so he's still he's still there. He's but still there. Me, before I go in, I say, you are playing a character. You are just going to mime to 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 show that character to the fullest. One. Immediately, I finish the shoot. You are done with it. I'm back to myself. Okay. Just before we, we go, we have breakfast for you. I just want to ask oh. one question. <laughs> Move, what, 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 what can your fans watch out to? What have you been working on? What new? Is there anything that your fans can look forward to? Yeah, to there are a couple on? of movies. Uh, like the one I just... Okay. Uh, my daughter there was... Uh, was a character. She had a friend that she, you would never know okay. that she was jealous of the friend. Okay. You would never know. Mm. They were working the same place. They were, they went to school together. I trained the other girl. Oh. And also my daughter. Quite and so she even helped the girl to get a job where she was working. Wonderful, wonderful. But uh, she ended up being the one to kill the girl. Ah, she hires some people. I will introduce you to two ladies in the kitchen. <laughs> they could be your daughter and that's her friend, okay? Let's, let's head over. Let's head over to the kitchen now, please. Do you mean... Yes, yes. All right, Mr. Alex, this is Titi. This is uh, Danny. Yeah. <laughs> two of them could go for the daughter and that's her friend. Yeah. <laughs> they look like one could kill the other. <laughs> wow. Welcome into the Boy of Nigeria kitchen. So it's a pleasure having you here. Uh, I have Chef Tidy here. He's literally mm -hmm. been hard at work putting together Alfredo pasta uh, for you. I would like for you to try it out and let us know exactly what you think about it. Chef, tell us what exactly we have in that plate. Yes. Alfredo pasta. <laughs> Alfredo pasta. <laughs> you know. That's what we have there. Uh, yes. my, my, my wife will not allow me to eat this at home. Wow. Ah. Oh. Uh, no. So, so that means you're going to eat everything yeah. now. No, she, just, she says rice is better than this. This is uh, flour. And oh. Okay, but maybe just the chicken. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and even the chicken, chef. Uh, uh, allow okay, what do you think about how it looks? Oh, it looks delicious. Wonderful. Yeah. No, I like I this. Like I like uh, Wonderful. Uh, I like noodles and cook. All right. Cook. All right. She's not my right. wife. She doesn't. All right, that's okay. Well, that's okay. No, that's okay, sir. Your wife today, well done. Sir. Yeah, that's, that's okay. Fine. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> right. That's it on the show today. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank All you. Right. Bye. 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 Bye.